Okay, let's uh, we'll go ahead and call to order the October 6th meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, can we call the roll, please? Yes. Chairman Lane. Here. Commissioner Sibley. Here. Commissioner Barnard. Here. Commissioner Gayu. Here. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Goon. Here. Commissioner Jacoby. Here. Councilmember Rodriguez. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, first order of business would be approval of uh, two sets of minutes. Uh, the first being our August fourth, twenty twenty two, and the second being September first, twenty twenty two. We'll take those one each at a time. So, uh, are there any uh, corrections or comments relating to the August meeting? If so, I'd uh, entertain a motion. Okay. okay, I've got a motion to approve from Commissioner uh, <clears throat> Jacoby and a second from Commissioner Sibley. All in favor, please uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Okay, uh, those minutes are approved. September, let's see, September 1st. 2020. Any comments or corrections on those minutes? No? Okay. Motion? All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Okay. I have a motion to approve the September minutes by Commissioner Barnett, uh, seconded by Commissioner Jacoby. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? None. Okay, those minutes are also now approved. Thank you. All right. Uh, report from the chair. I don't have anything in particular other than uh, we would like to take this uh, opportunity to um, uh, acknowledge the efforts of our uh, unfortunately no longer uh, commissioner, uh, <laughs> Mr. Lee Hardy's. Um, and so we have, uh, I've got a, we'll come up here and have, have you come up. I've got a little certificate of appreciation for you. Uh, yeah, come on up here. And uh, and you can have your, your plaque. Picture? Yes. Lee, do you want a picture? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Greg. Hold it up. Hold it up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we do. We do appreciate your your time, and, and this commission in particular is a little different than many in the in the city because we do require uh, not quite half, but but a decent amount of forty percent of the commissioners have to have some professional background in preservation, and so um, you know having that expertise on the panel is always uh, really valuable. So again, thanks thanks for coming down. All right, that is all I had. Um, We'll move on to communications from the HPC staff liaison. Sure, the prime. I don't really have too much to report at this point. Um, the primary thing that we have coming up is it's time to prepare our CLG report to send to the State Historic Preservation Office. So we will be getting that taken care of this month and uh, sent in. Okay. Um, I know last month we had, uh, I don't know, five or six folks come down and, and speak about uh, things going on at the Bone Farm. Um, and I wonder if you could give us a little update on what is just sort of happening out there and if we expect to see something in the nearer future. Sure. So currently um, we don't have an application in place at this point. Um, the project has gone through a pre-application meeting as well as a neighborhood meeting that was quite well attended by the public. Um, 
So the applicant is currently preparing their application, their application package, making revisions to the site plan. They were originally proposing um, about 75 townhome units. They are looking to scale that number down a bit, um, in, you know, basically in response to some of the community concerns. So as far as where that is in the process, they haven't actually entered the process yet, aside from the pre-application um, uh, you know, meetings and, and neighborhood meetings. Um, I do anticipate receiving an application, a formal application package uh, later this month from them, so. Okay, and are, are there, forgive me, I'm not 100% uh, up to speed, are there properties there that are landmarked that, that would require a certificate of appropriateness for modifications, or is it just the fact that it's kind of a there, district? There are no landmark, yeah. has, there are yeah. no locally designated landmarks. It is not a locally designated district of any sort. Right. Um, there is a farmhouse on the property that um, did have a cultural cultural um, survey performed on it several years back, and it would be eligible for local listing, um, did have some local significance, but the owners at this point aren't interested in pursuing that. There, um, there will be a, a small kind of city-owned pocket park on the property, but it's not on the side of the property where the farmhouse is, and um, the city parks department has not, um, they, they don't have interest in, in owning and maintaining that particular property. They don't think, you know, it's an appropriate, per, it, that, that, that particular park is an appropriate location for, for it. And at this point, there really isn't a good opportunity or good option for relocating the house at this point either. So, um, in a nutshell, it would be sad to lose it, um, but it does not have. It has not been designated, um, and it's not part of any sort of landmark property. It's not part of a locally designated historic district. So, in effect, there's no jurisdiction for this commission with respect to that project. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, with, as things move, we'd appreciate an update if we absolutely uh, could. Uh, on that. Um, in that same sort of vein, uh, I was curious, I, I, I noticed uh, a while back and meant to mark this, 356 Main is undergoing some uh, renovations, um, and that's not a landmark, but it is a contributing mm -hmm. building in uh, the National District. And so again, I, I recognize at least the way that our current ordinance is written, there's no obligation for those folks to come before the commission for a certificate of appropriateness. But being the fact that it's actually in a district, um, I wonder if there was any discussion when that application was received, whether there would be, you know, whether it was presented that to the, the applicant that, you know, might be of some value to come before the board and, and get any kind of feedback or in the absence of that, if we could, again, just be kind of informed as a body, it's, I, I think it's good for us to, to be aware of what the development applications are happening in, especially sure. within districts. You know, Main Street, obviously, pretty, pretty prime visible. location, pretty mm -hmm. visible. So, so staff did take a look at that um, proposal when it came in. Um, I know it went before the DDA board, and the applicant is really looking to undo some of the non-contributing aspects, um, alterations that were done over the years. So um, restoring the original brick, um, doing some work on the storefront itself that, to make it more in line with its original, its original um, appearance. So um, because it's not a landmark, it, didn't, it did not need a certificate of appropriateness per se, but staff did take a look at it and um, you know, we felt that it was, that the alterations they were proposing were ultimately a very good thing for that building. Okay, okay. Yeah, I guess it would be great if we could, again, and we, we have done this in the past. Mm -hmm. I think part of this is maybe just staff change and that kind of thing. When, when there was a project that wasn't necessarily um, up in front of us for a COA, often we 
you know, staff mm -hmm. might just include that in their report to say okay. this is happening. It's in, within the district. It's not an action item for you, but we like you to know that this is what's going sure. on and that we've reviewed it and we've ha had a discussion about historic preservation with the client. You know, just I think it's better for everyone. We get to know what's going on, and if the client and you know somebody wants to come in front of the board and just just get some feedback again mm -hmm. because we've got some pretty pretty smart people on this board. Um, that's a, something they can do that isn't binding. Sure, I appreciate that feedback. Yeah, great. Thank you. And, and are they aware of? I'm. I gotta. I gotta. This. This. This is not an instant <laughs> process. Uh, are they aware of the potential for tax credits and that sort of thing as well? If considering it is in. And I forget if it's a state district or a national register district. It's a national register so district. They, they so they would be, you know, they could avail themselves of both state and federal tax credits if they're doing the work appropriately. So sure. that's a pretty significant. And I would have to talk, touch base with Brian on that because he's he's been more involved um, as our staff liaison to the Downtown Development Authority. So um, he's been a bit more involved in that particular process. So I know, you know, they've been working closely with the DDA um, and, and such so I just don't know that they felt I don't know if they've decided to pursue any sort of grants or if they would pursue landmark designation to avail themselves of grants so well but they they're already in the district so they right. don't have to do anything to get state and federal true that, that is true which are pretty significant right now. absolutely so. absolutely right. I'm, I'm pretty certain that somebody has mentioned those to them as well so yeah, because I think if if they if they do if they came back and actually became became before us and actually requested a landmark like said hey we're going to do these improvements these are historic um, you know we're going to take um, steps that would be consistent with the Secretary of Interior's standards in our you know rehabilitation of this building and we want to landmark it even under the current ordinance they would be uh, eligible for a waiver of permit fees and I mean right. there's a, there's a decent amount of carrots out there that if they're going to do everything right anyways, <laughs> you know, I mean, that, then 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 yeah. it can be a case of helping, Absolutely. you know, versus this doesn't always have to be the, the place where the hammer is thrown, right? I mean, it can be also the place where, where you we, know, we have some carrots. Are encouraged. <laughs> we have right. some carrots. So I'll, I'll touch base with Brian because he's been more involved in that process than I have. So um, and see what discussions they've had regarding the tax credits. Great. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, next item would be public invited to be heard. So if there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak to something that is not on the agenda, this is your moment. You can come on up and uh, state your name, and you'll have a few minutes to... Yeah? Nope. All right, everybody's here for the party. Okay, all right. Very good. I'll close the public invited to be heard, and uh, we'll move on to the public hearing. So this is a hearing for a certificate of appropriateness for a new accessory dwelling unit at 329 Fifth Avenue. And staff, I imagine you, we have a presentation. We do have a presentation. It should be up on your screen. Make it full screen. All right, so this is a continuance of the public hearing for 329 Fifth Avenue um, from the September meeting. As you recall, uh, may recall from the last meeting, they were presenting a certificate of appropriateness package that included um, porch alterations or really porch restoration to remove some non-contributing aspects of the front porch and also to construct a um, garage with a second story accessory dwelling unit. Um, we did continue the accessory dwelling unit portion of the public hearing to this meeting because there were some last minute changes to the design in response to certain zoning requirements um, for accessory dwelling units and accessory structures specifically. So in terms of your vicinity here, just to give everyone a refresher, this particular property is at the southeast uh, corner of 5th and Emory. 
So uh, this is the HS web house. It was built in 1907, designated in 2019. The request is to replace an existing single-story garage that is not contributing with a two-story addition that includes a two-car garage, a workshop, and a second-story ADU. Um, this is go shift has shifted from an accessory structure to an addition in order to comply with setback requirements under the zoning code. So rather than a freestanding um, accessory structure, they are proposing an addition where, whereby the garage is effectively connected to the main house through a mudroom, um, through a small mudroom. So planning staff has reviewed the accessory dwelling unit. It meets our um, ADU standards that are in our land development code. Um, as I mentioned, the pr original proposal was modified um, to be an addition versus an accessory structure. Um, as well, um, Historic Eastside Neighborhood Association has provided a letter of support um, for this project, um, both in, it, in its current design. So they are happy, they, they expressed um, you know, approval of the design that they were, um, they, they liked the fact that it was in character with the house and the neighborhood. In terms of staff recommendations, we do appro recommend approving the addition as proposed. And with that, I am going to turn it over to the applicant to talk through the specifics of the design and proposal. Good evening. My name is Danielle Lynn, and I'm the architect. I work with uh, well, for myself, but in context architecture. And one of the homeowners, Julia Stone, is here with me as well. Um, so we'll just give you a quick run through. Um, so up on the screen is the site plan. Emory Street is below, Fifth Street is to the left. Uh, the image up here is the front of the house as addressed from Fifth Street. So that's uh, looking from the left side over here. And this dashed line is the new garage, and this is the mudroom attachment um, piece that we're talking about. Uh, it's utilizing existing driveway, and the previous garage sat in this corner as well. Um, it's kind of a mock-up of the previous single-story garage, and where we are replacing that with the new two-story structure. So this is the view from Emory Street. Again, here's the existing garage. Below is what's proposed. Um, and in the back is the mudroom connection. And we pushed that to the back of the property and tried to minimize that um, as much as possible. So we felt like we were able to do that successfully without detracting um, from the historic character of the house. And we have tried to complement the design with colors, materials, similar roof lines, um, similar window proportions. Um, the windows also have to meet egress, so they had to be a little bit wider to, to make that work. There's a bedroom up here on the front. Uh, and here's another view just with some of the proposed uh, details. The top left is an existing detail over there just showing wood lap siding. They've got black trim, white siding, and gray doors, and we are matching that color scheme on the house. And we have an accent of kind of some square shakes, shingles up in the gable, uh, gable portions of this new structure, the new addition. Um, and the existing house has some shake shingles that have more of the rounded uh, detailing. So we've got some compatible design features, but we're we're not trying to mimic the existing structure, so they can still differentiate old from new. Um, any questions? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, I just, just for clarity. So you're recorded. Yeah. Just for clarity, so you had to increase the square footage of the building and you're going to have to obviously remove some historic material from the main house in order to be able to do this, even so, though it's the same footprint that you would have built as a separate building? 
So the, the story back behind this, actually it's not a setback thing, but it's a uh, area of detached a structure that's allowed versus if it's an addition. And so the ADU complied with, um, you have to be under 50% of the area of the main house, and we are at 35%. But with the garage, the garage itself also um, has a 50% requirement, but the two of them together have to be 50% or less. So by connecting it with this tiny mudroom piece, it's now an addition and not a detached structure. Um, so I, it, it's I kind of a, a, a funny zoning yeah. code. Uh, I would have hoped that you could have gotten an exception to that, considering, again, that this is a historic home and now you're actually gonna have to take a chunk out of it and you essentially end up with the same thing, right? It's you just very now similar. have a little and we actually <laughs> we don't really need it. There's an existing back door back there. Um, so we're connecting to an existing back door. It already has a little flight of staircase in inside of the home back there. So really just kind of tapping into that existing door in the back. That's, that's just one of those things that I think probably annoy a lot of people. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we did we did talk with planning staff to see and they were willing to um, exempt the, like a teeny increase, but we would have had to chop this thing down um, substantially to meet the their 50% requirement for entire uh, detached structure. Sorry about that. <laughs> so that was the revision we found out at the last minute, which bumped us to this month. But other than that, the structure is the same. Uh, any other qu questions or comments from commissioners? Yeah. I'm I'm not sure of the importance of you know the the cutting back of of getting into the historic house. I I personally just got a variance. I I have a garage that's bigger than my house, um, in Old Town. It's not a and, and my my house is not, you know, an official historic house, but it is. It was built in 1906, and I just I needed a big garage and not a big house. Um, so, and I know it was pretty easy to get the variance. Is that something you would prefer? I mean, it, or you're now wanting to do the mudroom? Uh, I would have to defer to homeowners to see if they wanted to uh, try and pursue additional options. Though we did talk pretty. Um, thoroughly about any alternatives and al alternate routes to get that approved with, uh, with planning for the site review process. And um, he said that they would be able to, I can't remember if he said that maybe like 10% extra, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't even close to getting us um, mm. the garage plus the, the ADU above, unfortunately. That's just, <laughs> thank you. Other questions or comments? No, I don't personally have a huge heartburn over over this tiny little connection, um, especially if there's already a door there that you're connecting to. I mean, it's a little weird that you had to go through this, but maybe it's okay. I, I don't think that's too terrible, and I think you've done a nice job of of designing something that with the, the appropriate scale and and I appreciate even the the notion of the shingles that's one of the first things I saw that they were square and one of my point one of my questions would have been are these really going to be square and not a fish scale mimic and so I appreciate you clarifying that yeah. all right um, well, if there's no other questions for the applicant, uh, we will at least, um, although I don't know that we have public comment, we'll, 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 uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and uh, ask for any public comment if there, if there is any. Um, I'll open, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for the information and the presentation. Um, well, just, would the homeowner, would you like this, anything to say before I close this section or, or, or are you good? Okay, thanks. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and open uh, public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this item?
Seeing none, I will close the public comment uh, and then open it up for any further discussion by the commission. Any comments or discussion? If not, I would entertain a motion. Yeah, go ahead. And, go ahead. So you're on the record here. Approve this application as is. I'll second. Okay. So I have a motion uh, for approval of the certificate of appropriateness from Commissioner Goon, seconded by Commissioner Norton. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? None. All right. Your application is approved unanimously. Thank you for coming down and, and spending the time with us tonight. Okay, uh, new business would be next on our agenda, and it does not appear that we have any new business that aren't action items, so that we'll move on to prior business, uh, which involves, uh, looks like a couple of updates. First being uh, an update on the status of our <laughs> barn, our Dickens barn. <laughs> so we have good news on the, on the barn. Excellent. So um, we have come to an agreement with the applicant. Um, we're in the process of figuring out how best to get that memorialized where um, the barn will be dedicated, conveyed to the city um, with a stipend for stabilization uh, as well as basically all the outlots on the property will be conveyed to the city as well. So there will be that intact resource with the barn. Um, at which point we will be figuring out exactly what we're going to do with it and how we're going to maintain it. But once we have it in our possession, we can come up with some more concrete plans. Well, now the other thing I understand is I believe it's still going to be on the Parks and Rec Advisory Board meeting on Monday. Yeah. So I think it would be good if you can make it, Mr. Chair. And um, it's at 630. Okay. And I don't know where. I believe it's at the um, Sunset Drive the Service Center. Parks and Rec park, facility. Yeah, it's at the Parks and Rec facility is my understanding. Just south of the river. Okay. All right. I, I'll get you more details okay. of that. But staff is on board. We have the applicant on board. I think everything looks good. Okay. At this point, it's just a matter of getting everything memorialized and and such. So, But we Great. have, you know... We have we have we have a solution. So that's very exciting. Excellent. Uh, any commissioner questions or comments on that one? Just a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Well, thanks. Uh, I, I want to thank staff for working uh, on this because I know we kind of threw it at you, and I'd, I'd like to call out the commissioners too for you know kind of pushing back on this and and making this happen. It's a I think it's a big win for everyone, honestly. So yeah, and back at you. Uh, <laughs> make it an issue and and yeah we had to push some buttons and get it to happen but um i think everybody realized it was the right thing so great that's excellent all right wonderful um and then our second set of updates would be on uh hpc code amendments yeah and uh, what i wanted two? to update the um <laughs> I missed that. Sorry. I'm sure it was snide. I, <laughs> I just said, if we uh, could, we go two for two tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, um, it, we've been trying to get back on the council agenda. Um, I am going to meet with our staff team to see if we can maybe separate this into a little smaller bites rather than throw everything at um, the council and yourselves. And I know. Um, it really started with concerns about the demolition um, process and criteria that's in the code. So um, I think that's my suggestion is maybe we pull that aside and, and we work on that and um, bring it to council in smaller pieces. So at least from a staff team, we're going to be figuring out how to move it forward in smaller bite-sized pieces, I guess. Okay. Can I ask? Yeah, absolutely. Just go ahead and. Just for um, clarification, does that mean that it would be added to the um, 
that it would be added to the code in bite-sized pieces? Or like, does that change what our overall process is? Or would we wait for the whole package to be done and then it would be voted on? Um, I'm going to have to kind of dig into that a little bit. Okay. But I think um, I would prefer to actually do amendments in yeah. piece unless... Um, okay. But one of the big pieces, you know, is pulling out uh, chapter two and putting it into 15 yep. and then creating the overlay and everything. So if um, if we can get section two so it's in good shape and then make the big move, um, okay. that might make sense. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, should we, is it a value to bring that back here as a discussion item for the commissioners to kind of review that language and just go over it internally before, or do we need the city attorney to come here and you know, what's, what, what is the right step next, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk to the city attorney about. Okay. And um, that would be my recommendation is we kind of get a format that HPC is happy with. Um, and then we maybe do another work session with city council on the regular agenda. Um, and just, yeah, figure out a plan of how to bring it um, in pieces forward. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions from commissioners about that? Okay. Um, the other one uh, that, that's sort of looped into this is, is uh, status of grants for uh, surveying. I'll let Jennifer handle this. <laughs> <laughs> As similar status update from previous meeting, um, we are still having some significant staff shortages right now. So... Um, because we're wearing a ton of hats and trying to get uh, development projects reviewed as expeditiously as possible. This has kind of been put on the back burner, but hopefully it will get moved to the front burner before sooner rather than later. Is there any, uh, is there an ability or possibility for commission members to potentially help with that process? If it's just, if it's writing a grant that is I mean, we're talking about non-competitive grants, I think, for surveying property. I don't know that that's a particularly complicated. It's not. No. Uh, uh, and so, I mean, I, I might be uh, uh, suggesting a volunteering folks on this commission who don't want to be, don't want to volunteer, but I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but we're putting pressure on you. I might as well put pressure on everybody else. Um, you know, is, is there an opportunity for, for the if there's a commission member that's willing to, to step in and help out a little bit or work, spend a few hours with staff, is that is that possible? Does that mean? I like the idea. Okay. I right. mean, uh, no to objection. be honest, um, <laughs> we are actually putting together uh, just some backfilling planning um, help. We're putting an RFQ out, um, but we'll certainly take volunteers from anybody who doesn't have a conflict, um, <laughs> which might be complicated, but right. we'd certainly... Love to talk about that. Okay. Well, I won't put anybody on the spot tonight uh, on the on the commission here, but if, if commissioners want to have a, you know, consider that if anybody's got an interest in, in helping the city move this forward, which would help us just move our the whole agenda forward. Um, and some of these meetings are pretty short. So, yeah, go ahead. Uh, almost. Almost. I'm not, I'm not thrilled with this, to be honest with you. It says, C4, mic on. Unfortunately, missed a couple of the past meetings. So which grants and what type of grants are we talking about? <laughs> you know, I think you know, we are going for a non-competitive grant to do yes. additional survey work. Yes, so we were, property. well, we were looking at putting together, doing a survey, doing one of the non-competitive grants to put together a survey plan for the, for the city okay. and, and figure out what were, which ones we would be targeting for surveying in the future. Yeah, this goes back a ways, and I think yeah. you, it was, 
one of the meetings you, you, I think you suggested it now that I recall. Um, <laughs> um, let, me, uh, let me take a look at it and I will contact you about uh, what information I would need to put that together. Great, I appreciate that. Excellent. Thank you, Commissioner Gayu. All right. Um, any other comments or questions on the code amendments or grants or no? No? Okay. Very good. Thank you for those updates. Um, so at this point, we're just down to any comments from HPC commissioners. Anybody have anything they'd like to throw out? Okay. Commissioner Jacoby. You got it. There you go. All right. Uh, I, I, two comments. Uh, the first is a reminder that there will be another uh, historic walking tour this Saturday. If anyone's interested in coming, you're certainly welcome. It's 9 to noon, and it starts at the west side of the uh, library. Um, and I've been doing some average. We'll see what kind of numbers I get, but uh, there will be another uh, walking tour. The second um, concern I have involves uh, the last reduction of property for designation that we encountered. And um, we approved it, and I think that was appropriate, but I think our backs were against the wall in a sense in that if we didn't approve it, they would probably de-designate their property due to economic incentives to subdivide. And I know of another property on Collier Street that was de-designated. And I don't think, you know, just discussing with folks here earlier, I don't think there's any consequence to de-designation. And while we're talking about code amendments, maybe we should think about whether we would want to put something into writing about uh, consequences of de-designation. If people are uh, reaping benefits, economic benefits from designating, and then they decide to de-designate, I would think at a minimum we would want to get that tax and permit money back. So um, I, don't, I just throw that out there as a thought. I don't know if anyone else has any comments about that or wants to discuss that further. All right. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, any other comments from commissioners? No? All right. Uh, how about our city council representative? Thank no? you all for your service. All right. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here. All right. Well, uh, at that point, we're at the end of our agenda. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. All right. I have a second. I'll second. Oh, all right. We have, uh, I'm going to go moved uh, by uh, Commissioner Barnett and seconded by Commissioner Sibley, since we're right next to each other. And uh, all those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much for your time.